In his own lifetime, Galileo was the center of violent controversy. But the scientific dust has long since settled. And today, we can see even his famous clash with the Inquisition in something like its proper perspective. But in contrast, it is only in modern times that Galileo has become a problem child for historians of science. The old view of Galileo was delightfully uncomplicated. He was, above all, a man who experimented, who despised the prejudices and book learning of the Aristotelians, who put his questions to nature instead of to the ancients, and who drew his conclusions fearlessly. He had been the first to turn his telescope to the sky and he had seen their evidence enough to overthrow Aristotle and Ptolemy together. He was the man who climbed the leaning tower of Pisa and dropped various weights from the top, who rolled balls down inclined planes and then generalized the results of his many experiments into the famous law of free fall. But a closer study of the evidence, supported by a deeper sense of the period, and particularly by a new consciousness of the philosophical undercurrents in the scientific revolution, has profoundly modified this view of Galileo. Today, although the old Galileo lives on in many popular writings, among historians of science, a new and more sophisticated picture has emerged. At the same time, our sympathy for Galileo's opponents has grown somewhat. His telescopic observations are justly immortal. They aroused great interest at the time. They had important theoretical consequences, and they provided a striking demonstration of the potentialities hidden in instruments and apparatus. But can we blame those who looked and failed to see what Galileo saw? If we remember that to use a telescope at the limit of its powers, calls for long experience and intimate familiarity with one's instrument. Was the philosopher who refused to look through Galileo's telescope more culpable than those who alleged that the spiral nebulae observed with Lord Rossi's great telescope in the 1840s were scratches left by the grinder? We can perhaps forgive those who said the moons of Jupiter were produced by Galileo's spyglass if we recall that in his day, as for centuries before, curved glass was the popular contrivance for producing not truth, but illusion, untruth. And if a single curved glass would distort nature, how much more would a pair of them?